this is great. We just realized we weren't recording, so we're going to have to recreate this conversation as if it never happened. But um, take it away, Andy. Your your movie this week is Space Jam, A New Legacy. Colon, A New Legacy. Colon, A New Legacy. Yes. This is amazing. <laughs> I can't God, believe 15 minutes. Do you have to, not only do you have to start over, but you have to start over with doing this movie. Yeah, I know. It's like, and now that I know what it's about, I don't want to hear it again. Okay, let's, let's, uh, let's just, just just tell us what the fucking movie's about so cliff, we can get through this thing. Cliff notes on the past 15 minutes. Uh, so, Space Jam. I called Andy an idiot. He didn't refute, yada, yada, yada. I did refute. Mm. Um, for the record, uh, so Space Jam: A New Legacy. Basically, you don't have to talk faster, like everybody. You're catching everybody up. We just started. It's true. Okay, so it ta- uh, LeBron James <laughs> and, his, and his son. Oh, really? Tell me about this movie. <laughs> and his son uh, gets sucked into the Warner Brothers server verse and is met with an algorithm. Oh, it's Warner Brothers server verse. Yeah. Is it called server verse? Did you just make no, that up? No, they call it the server verse. Because that's really bad writing. Uh, dude, there's tons of bad like uh, server technology verse? puns in this in this uh, film. LeBron James and son get sucked into a video game, and they have to do something in order to get out. Yeah, LeBron, well, two things, to save the world and to, uh, to save, save the Save the world son. from what? Because the algorithm, played by Don <laughs> Cheadle, <laughs> is... The algorithm in the video game... Yeah. Or in the server verse is played by the actor Don Cheadle. That is one hundred percent. But his name's not Don Cheadle in it. It's Al G Rhythm. Algorithm, <laughs> like Edward e-, e Nigma. Boy, when they Edward go Nygma. when they go terrible on reboots, they go bad, don't yeah. they? Yeah, Ooh. yeah, they do. That, you know, that's they that's do. pretty bad. Double down. Hey, Draymond Green is in in this. Oh yeah, he's in this. Cause so he, you see him for a split second because basically they they do a flashback because the kids like makes video games right so he has like the players. So Draymond's um, my man. You can't videos. say he's not in this when I said he's in. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, I'm, like I all the basketball players. I apologize ahead of time if you're listening to this. Um, <laughs> well, it's like I said originally. It's not just basketball players. It's history, names, dates, uh, cities, state capitals, uh, movies. Okay, whatever. what I did today. You can't remember I'm bad shit. With names. You can't remember shit. Uh, okay. Anyway. Um, but yeah, so he basically, yeah. And so LeBron has to face Don Cheadle's, uh, you know, basketball team. So he has to put a team together. Okay. Pen- so who, who's Don Cheadle's basketball? It's not like the, the aliens from the, from the first. No. One. So he's the one that ends up, uh, taking the play, uh, the real NBA players and then digitizing them and like souping them up with like power ups and all that stuff. So the, it's like, oh, so it's real players versus real players. It's well, it's, it's, it's real players that are now cartoon, like, I get it. I get it. It's versus, real players, but versus a LeBron. So and real Tunes. names. Oh, okay. So nobody real is on LeBron's team besides LeBron. Correct. It's yeah. it's, it's Bugs Bunny and uh, yeah, Daffy Duck, Yosemite Sam. I mean, that sounds Lola very Bunny. fun because I I'm a huge fan of the Wonder Brothers cartoons. But this seems like who is doing the voices of these people? Uh, these people of the tunes. Yeah, I, I I didn't look it up afterwards because I was just like, all right. How I did they it. compare from your childhood? Did they sound at all like Mel Blanc? It's it's like close, you know what I'm saying? They get people that can do it really close, but you can you can just tell it's not not the original. Of I would have gone the other way. I would have hired you for <laughs> some of these things. Well, thank you. I appreciate let that. Me, let me hear your uh, Bugs Bunny. Hey, what's up, Doc? Uh, Yosemite Sam. Wild by Iota. Uh, Roadrunner. Me me. Wiley Coyote. That's good. He spoke in like one episode, though. Remember, he always holds up the sides. So yeah, that's why I should have. <laughs> he had a spoke side. in one episode when he was like, he's like oh, actually a really intelligent guy, I'm sure. and he's he's like a professor. Yeah, I always loved the Roadrunner. <laughs> I love all of those. Yeah. This, but this was the bastardization of that, wasn't? It? Yeah, it was. I mean, but the thing is, is like, there's good like Looney Tunes jokes in this, right? Okay. So, so mm-hmm. it's like you know, it brings back on the nostalgia, and also too like the the ones I laughed at. Oh, but you the- lied. Le- LeBron's kid is also in, in the video game too. So does he play? Yeah, he he. So he, he's a human. Well, he, because in his game you can have power ups. So technically, he's not human, and he can, he can dribble the ball, and you can't even see it, but it's moving a mile a minute. You know, so it's like he's uh, he's superhuman. And LeBron's the only like real like normal human. Okay, so it's like Anthony Davis, Dream, uh, Clay Thompson, Damian Lillard, uh, even female stars yeah. are on the other team. Okay, yeah. the Sue Bird's in there. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I don't want to. 
I don't want to uh, ruin the names of, of some of these people because I respect them so much. And and, of, and there's also like, you know, uh, uh, cameos by other like his family in there. Um, you know, they're, they're part of the whole story. Too. Oh, that goes back to the first one. You know, the Michael Jordan version. Let's not pretend like that was a good movie or anything. You know, it no. just it just what it was. A, it was fun and it was OK. And it was the 90s, man. Yeah. We were swinging back then. Yeah. And, and, you know, it was still when it was fresh, you know, when and Michael Jordan wasn't like the best actor in it or anything. But you had Bill fucking Murray in it. Yeah, and he was hilarious in that movie. Yeah, no, no such uh, Bill Murray or Bill Murray esque character in this one. Which and Newman was in it too. Wayne Knight was in it. Yeah, he was. He was on the team too. Yeah, that's right. That was a sweet movie. Yeah. Never mind, it was a sweet movie. Yeah. But it's not really because it's like it was really cheesy. But it's for kids. Yeah, it's a kids movie. And that's the thing with this too. It's still a kids movie. Yeah, you know? but kids are less educated now. I was, okay. was going to say dumber. That's just mean. You can't yeah. say, oh, you kids are dumb. Uh, yeah. But because you're dumb, that's, I'm not you're, dumb. Yeah, you are. You're like you're pushing fifty. You know, so you should pushing fifty. <laughs> I mean, who's the one who can't do math here? I'm saying you're pushing. You're you're getting into that age where you haven't learned it by now. We you're can, pushing a lot can, of things right now. We I can keep consider talking. Consider you dumb. No, you can't. <laughs> <laughs> Only you, and that's fine by me. I don't give a shit what you think. But uh, the the reason, like, so, but the kids aspect of movies of kids movies now, they don't treat kids like they used to. They the Space Jam the original one, it felt like a kids movie, but adults liked it, and adults yeah. still watch that piece of crap. And in and in this one, they kind of do it because there's a middle section where LeBron does become a Looney Tune. They like, go to the strip club. <laughs> <laughs> this one is for the adults. Yeah, right. No, but then Bugs Bunny, Daffy Duck, in all the tunes, but LeBron and uh, uh, Bugs Bunny, they're trying to go find Lola Bunny to complete the team roster. Which one's Lola? Uh, it's the, the sexy one that the they made Bunny. not sexy? Yeah, the... Uh, you know, a Bugs' girlfriend. I still thought wife. she looked sexy. I don't yeah, understand what is. the controversy was. She's a great looking bunny. They like they they flattened her chest. I guess. Okay, sure. All right. Big I guess. fucking deal. Yeah. Well, look at uh, Jessica Rabbit. Come on. You know, from uh, from uh, who's frame who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, but that was, still... that's ridiculous to compare those two. That was like straight up like a yeah. pinup girl. Exactly. You Everybody can... pictured with no clothes on. And then fucking, you're worried about a bunny. I mean, that was the 80s. Yeah, it was. I mean, but she's still around. But uh, she's a cartoon I character. I guarantee you there's some around. freaky cosplay out there with Jessica Rabbit oh, all the time. For sure. Coming out of your room. <laughs> no, no. That, that doesn't... That doesn't... You got to wipe that red um, lipstick off more uh, conspicuously. Okay. Yeah, I'm, that's no thumper. So, but, anyway, but, uh, anyway. You, you need to hear this because I think, I don't know if you're going to be mad about this or this is going to make you want to watch the movie. Um, so, in the middle of the movie, when LeBron is, like, all cartoonized, Cartoonized, uh, yeah. animated, baby. Animated, yeah. But he's he's animated a few different ways in this movie. Oh boy! Um, but they Bugs Bunny and LeBron go through like classic movies, like Mad Max. Well, not classic. Well, Casablanca. Uh -huh. Play it against Sam. Sam is the the uh, you know Yomi seventy Sam is the the player in the movie. Play it against Sam, the Woody Allen movie. No, no, no. The Casablanca when they say oh. play it against Sam. <laughs> okay. uh, they do uh, Mad Max Fury Road with the Road Runner. Uh, they do a bunch of different uh, like. Wonder I mean, is Woman. it all like one sequence though? It's like a yeah, it's like a. But it, they give a good. Little it's a bit. montage of a one of, of going all through through these movies. Yeah. Well, I'll just watch that part. Okay. Yeah. I'm good. Yeah, and the whole thing is now now Warner Brothers is cashing in and saying, hey, just besides the Looney Tunes, look, we have Kong, we have the Harry Potter universe, we have the DC verse. You know, like. Well, I mean, I like that when they did it with Ready Player One. Remember that movie? Oh yeah. The yeah, Spielberg yeah. movie. They kind of went back in the Shining house and. Uh, a couple other like famous things through the through the the the, the game. Yeah, explained. the game that I and I really like that movie. I keep thinking that Spielberg did that movie. He really really surprised the shit out of me with Ready Player One. I'm gonna go yeah. back. I almost watched that again the other day, but I don't know why. I, yeah, I'll go back and watch it. it. That's a sweet movie. Very underrated Spielberg movie. It was great for that summer. That was my big big summer one. I, I'm a chosen one this year because there doesn't seem. There doesn't seem to be that like that ridiculous idea summer movie this year where I'm like, I gotta see this piece yeah. of crap. Yeah. This is just big, dumb, and stupid. Yeah. And I have that in the podcast and he's sitting right across from me. What uh, no, he is not. <coughs> anyway, uh Space Jam could have been it, but uh So not. how well bummed out were you? Uh, you know, I was I mean pretty bummed. But I mean it's it's one of those things. Kids what ruins like the movie? LeBron. Oh man! I mean, I love him. To, like nothing against his fucking. He's one of the greatest of all time. You know, basketball we're not talking player. about basketball playing, but he just one note performance the whole time. Like I felt his wife. And so it, was Jordan. Is I felt like Jordan had a little bit really? more range to him. You know, okay, because it's like there was like two LeBron uh, voice styles in this. It was either, um, you know. We got to get this together, team. Or let's go. We got this. You know, it's like one of those. Those, some, those both sound exactly the same to me. Okay. Well, <laughs> I will work on my delivery next time, I guess. 
<laughs> give you some more Meisner training. Yeah, I'll give you a Meisner. Uh, you give me a migraine. <laughs> so the movie is almost two hours long. Yep. When did you think you wanted to turn it off? Uh, well, I mean, first off, it takes like 35 minutes for the Looney Tunes to show up, the gang of Looney Tunes. See, so. that's ridiculous. Um, you know, so I guess like 45 minutes in. But the was the but the game it all comes down to like the big game. Yeah, right? the game is like forty five minutes long. Damn, that's long. But yeah. it, it, that that was like uh, this in Space Jam that was entertaining. That yeah. part actually, the whole movie is kind of entertaining. I, not really the stuff with the uh, you know where they're trying to steal the souls of the baseball bas the basketball players or when they're yeah. on like the in the beginning they're explaining why they're there. Yeah, no. Um, but the first one just such a better movie. <laughs> it yeah. sounds like it sounds yeah, like, I and I can't believe I'm saying it. Like everybody talks about Space Jam, like it's an Oscar-winning movie, like for nostalgia from our nostalgia of the '90s. It was an important movie for kids no, it at that was age. Not it was like for me. I mean, speak for yourself. Merging two things that are, you know, like America. They've done America. that a million times. The Adventures of Rocky and Bullwinkle's terrible. Looney Tunes back in action, terrible. Yeah, but were these live action? And Roger Rabbit. That's a good one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah Roger they do Rabbit. it every few years. And they've only been successful once. Yeah, I guess so. I uh -huh. don't know. You can't, you can't, you can't capture lightning in the bottle. Just I guess. like your favorite cheese, there's tons of holes in it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I do like. Uh, I so do like your old. I'm never gonna see this, or I'm gonna, am I gonna see this? I, I don't think you'll ever watch this. <laughs> you're goddamn right. <laughs> I, I think you just, not, if someone put it on, you're like, fine, fuck it. I guess I'll cross. It I off respect my list, the but, idea. I respect yeah. the idea. I love Looney Tunes, and I, I, I hate people calling them Looney Tunes. They're actually Warner Brothers cartoons. Oh, yeah. Um. But at the same time, it feels too much like a cash grab. I loved LeBron in Trainwreck, the Amy Schumer movie. Um, but when you take away the funny lines, is there an actor there? I don't know. I what? mean, he had, he had great funny dialogue by Jed Apatow. But he wasn't also the leading man. Too, he was just a support character, and I think it's just like, all right, let's just it's like let's get him in spurts, and that's good. Well, if this kicks off like an acting thing for him, then this is gonna go this is gonna go south for him. I feel like, yeah, unless he gets some lessons or something. I mean, lessons, you know, he think he's he's the well, he might be the greatest basketball player of all time. You think he's gonna be? Oh, I'll take some lessons on this. No, I'm gonna go out there and do it just like Mike did. Yeah, right. once. <laughs> yeah, and there's a great Michael Jordan joke in the. Oh, he's not in it though. No, he's not in it. Not, oh, that, okay. not that Michael Jordan. That's a bummer, man. I, I, I thought at least they'd get Michael Jordan to do something. With I Louis. thought so, too. But and I wonder if they hate each other, LeBron James and Michael Jordan, you know, because I, you never see LeBron going and, like, kissing the ring. Yeah. You right. know, you figure you'd, you'd go and it's like everybody went to Richard Pryor and you know, everybody goes like the the Rodney Dangerfield the yeah. comedians. They're like, well, you've got to respect, like, the greatest that are still alive because people think they're the greatest. Yeah. But not LeBron James. He kisses no one ass but himself. That's why he calls himself the king. Mm. He King, calls himself that King James. Yeah, he calls himself that. I mean, he's he's. Referring I mean, did he invent his own nickname? That I have no idea. I mean, he calls himself that in the in the movie. So I don't I mean, know. If, I don't know. If well, I I'm gonna call you Barf from now on. I I do not decree this. <laughs> I'm I am, sorry. I am King Andy. You are the jester. King Jester Andy. That always needs to pull up his pants before his performance. Well, yeah, man. Well, let's switch uh, let's switch uh, lanes here and talk about a more serious movie, but also a very fun movie that I watched um, this past week. Thank you for that illustrious stringing together of words. Um, You're welcome. But You're very welcome. <laughs> the, movie, uh, the movie I watched, it's called Gunpowder Milkshake, and it's streaming on Netflix right now. Anything? Did you hear anything about this movie? Uh, no, but I did catch a little bit of it, uh, just a small little snippet of an action. Scene. So you didn't see anything? Good. No, no. Um, so I have no idea what this is about or anything. I found out about this movie because the New Beverly just opened up in Los Angeles, and I religiously look at their calendar because it's uh, curated by Mr. Quentin Tarantino, and his movie knowledge and his endorsements go a long way with my movie brain. This movie was, and they only, they really only. I think they only show things on film, so I'm guessing this was sh this was shot on film. It's a it's a movie from uh, an Israeli director. I'm gonna totally butcher his name, Navat Papushado. Okay, mm -hmm. this is uh, he hasn't made that many movies. Younger guy, it looks like, but he made a movie called Big Bad Wolves from 2013, and Tarantino said that that was the best movie of that year. Okay. I didn't get around to seeing that. But Gunpowder Milkshake is playing all week this week at the New Beverly, okay? And it's the only movie playing for like three or four days in a row, which is really impressive because Tarantino must really like this movie. Yeah. And it's a new movie, too. And he doesn't really endorse new movies right away. Yeah. You know, he waits at the end of the year or he waits a couple years. But this movie, it's kind of like those, you really like those Kingsman movies, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, it's kind of like that um, with, with females. 
it's about three generations of women fighting back against those who could take everything from them. That's not really what it's about. That's just what IMDb says. Okay. So it, to me, it takes place in, in in some kind of alternate universe that I can't figure out. It's it's the future or it's an alternate universe, but it's not really that different from our universe. Gotcha. It's One just of those. it's it's like kind of like a western, a future western where everybody has to check their guns when they go in any building, you know. But they're in yeah. the future. Uh, but it's not really the future because nobody looks like they're from the future. Gotcha. Anyway, yeah, I'm it's, with a, you. it's about this young girl who's an assassin mm-hmm. for this big corporation. We don't know what they do, but she they send her out to go and solve problems. She's Ray Donovan, basically. She's the cleaner. She got yeah, she got this uh, the training from her mother who was, was in the same position and who abandoned her when she was really young. And then this corporation trained her, basically. And the mother had done something very terrible where she, she had to disappear. Gotcha. Okay. So she grows up not knowing her mother and she's an assassin and she's all of like probably like 26 too. Um, and the first thing she does is she accidentally kills the evil corporation's favorite son or something like that. Okay. All right. So they're after her. And then her boss, who plays by who's played by Paul Giamatti, he's like kind of the lawyer, he's kind of like the the like the business side of yeah. this corporation. He sends his own guys after her too. So everybody's after her. And she meets a little girl that she has to take care of and save, much like she was in the beginning of the film. And so she's on the run, and there's it's constant, you know, uh, gun battles and car chases and hilarious jokes. It sounds like I wouldn't like this movie, but the tone of it was fucking awesome. Yeah, it was just fun action, fun shootouts. Not really gratuitous violence, but enough gratuitous violence where you were like, this is cartoony and, and hilarious in the same way. Yeah. Um, give you an example that there's a sequence when there's these these masked robbers that are that she's trying to give them back their money and they try to get away with the money after she gives it to them. And they're all dressed in with masks of famous movie monsters from like the, the universal days like Dracula, the Wolfman. Yeah. And so when when they're trying to get away, she ends up you know, taking a stake and killing Dracula by putting the stake through the guy's heart. Oh, and so yeah. it's like, that's hilarious. It, but done wrongly, you're like, that's lame. Yeah. But no, it was it's jokes like that the whole time. You're like, get the fuck out of here. This is going to be really cool because this guy knows how to design action sequences really cleverly. There's a fight in a bowling alley and he does things with the lanes and the balls and the pins to to like kill people that you you would never think of but you go like that's really clever. Oh yeah, like I, I can totally see where you're saying like the kin- Kingsman parallels. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's and it's the thing. It's like the, the I'm being I might be a little bit, you know, vague on the plot about you know what really is going on, but I didn't care. It was just fun. Yeah, yeah there's an evil corporation. People are after this girl and she's a badass and she's kicking ass. You know she's gonna meet up with her mom again and they're all gonna kick ass. Yeah. And that's basically what happened. And it's fun and visually it's just stunning. But I see exactly why Tarantino liked this movie because it's for all those people that go you know, why do you have to be so violent in your movies? And he has that famous interview. He was like, because it's fun, Jan. Yeah. And that's what this movie was. Sometimes I can watch a movie like this and go, yeah, this doesn't need a whole bunch of dialogue and a whole bunch of plot. This can just be visually fun and stunning and exciting. And I encourage you to watch it because I think you'll really like this movie because of those factors. It has a, you don't have to think too much in this. And I know you're not really a thinking Wait, guy. Wait, no, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. it. There's a time and place for everything, thinking included. Uh huh. <laughs> Sorry, I thought you were gonna say something. No, thinking. I was thinking. thinking. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, but um, Karen Gillan is the star, and you know her from I think some Marvel movie. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. She, oh, I, she's the cyborg sister from Guardians of the Galaxy yes, and Avengers. Yes. Nebula. Neb- yeah, Nebula. Yeah, the one that's all like a. Uh, Purple and Which I like. thought she was really good in, in yeah. Endgame. I like that whole back and forth where she hated her sister and doesn't she eventually kill her sister? I can't remember. Tries to. And then she comes back from yeah. where did, how did how does she come back? <sighs> if she comes I forget, man. Uh-huh. There's too many movies, man. My my mind is burnt out on the like like I said, I chapter ended it. And I watched one movie today and told you about it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. That's no, all no. you can do. No, I was even but it was crazy when you were talking about speaking of Marvel movies, like the beginning, like the, the setup for this story was exactly like Black Widows, too. It's like, hey, she's an assassin. She kills the kid of a. Oh, yeah, it's kind of similar, but it's a totally different tone. It's, it's, it, it feels like because of the otherworldly feel to the film, it feels like Dark City. You remember that movie? Yeah. Um, it feels like The Kingsman, but that's more set in reality. 
Um, but but yeah, just just really strange atmosphere. I think they shot it in Germany, which made you know when you when they shoot films in other cities, but they don't make make it clear where it is. It always feels like it's it's from another planet or yeah, something. Right. It's all shot at night too. It's like like noir, wild west theme, but also kind of strange sci-fi and then just a ton of a, a ton of chicks with fucking guns blowing the shit out of men which yeah. I, it was, was really sweet nice there's one one se- fight sequence in in particular where the main characters her hands get n- get numb from this uh, injection this dentist gives her and so she has to fight these three guys with no hands so she's she, like limp wristed just like she's like like, uh. like she has a little girl like tape the gun around her hand and then you know she has to. She basically has to like outmaneuver maneuver them without using her hands. It's fucking. I'm telling you, the sequence in this were really, really clever. Nice. If, if nothing else, I think this this is one just just that on uh, on its own merit is is why the movie is successful. Not the, not the biggest at the critics box office. But, you know they're they're basically poking holes in all the plot stuff and you know there's all you know it. If you want to look at it like that, yeah, it is. But there there the plot is very staid and tried and true. We've seen it a million times. But the other side of it is that's fine if you make up for it with something ingeniously new, like action sequences that, you know, break new ground. And this guy really, really uh, um, unbelievably talented filmmaker. Yeah, definitely want to check it out. It seemed cool when when, when uh, the one action sequence I saw, because yeah, now that you said Kingsman, I was like, yeah, that's what I was thinking about. It's really night. tongue in cheek. I mean, yeah. it really is. And I really appreciate that about it. But what else? It's, it's streaming on Netflix. You can watch it anytime you want. I w- but I also... I. I this is why it's playing at the New Beverly because if this was a sold out crowd in a theater, especially like the New Beverly, we would be laughing and cheering yeah, the all the, uh, the entire time, and that's what I miss the most about going to movies when you're all collectively in an audience laughing, cheering, screaming like it, that's that's the movies and people they're missing out if they think that you can get that at home. I like movies at home. Well. You you might not know how much you miss watching a movie with a fucking sold out crowd. Yeah, I might have liked Space Jam then. That doesn't have COVID. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Even Seabiscuit was good with a crowd. (laughs) Yeah. And I got the book to prove it. (laughs) Anyway. Today's episode of the Four Seasons of Film podcast is brought to you by Phil's Coffee. Phil's specializes in handcrafted coffee made one cup at a time. Visit a location today or find them on the web at philscoffee.com. That's phil's with a z, coffee.com. Find the beans you're looking for. Um, I want to know, what else did you watch this week? Uh, I watched the uh, the film Black Sunday this week. I was, Black I've, Sunday! Yeah, I've been finishing up. I, I re-watched John Adams, the limited series on HBO. finished it this week. So now I'm back to, I can watch movies Whoa, again. that's a pretty... Uh, tall order for somebody like you john adams yeah i wanted to go back and rewatch it I, I watched oh my god it. yeah i enjoyed it paul giamatti the fucking man i you know just to have a can i want to do that like remember when shia labeouf sat in a theater and watched all his movies straight through and he had a camera on yeah, him yeah i never I would, watched it i wanted to do that to you now with john adams because not only do i do i think that you didn't watch it i did mm, yeah you might have you might have been in the room i don't believe you sat and looked at a screen unblinkingly and watch John Adams all what ten episodes? Seven. Seven episodes. I don't buy it. Yeah. Well, I did. Too and historical. Too smart. Uh, way over your head. Wait. How's it? Wait. First off, it's not too <laughs> historical. <laughs> you watch Hamilton one time, you're like, got it. Well, okay. I I was wrong about my first viewing of Hamilton when when I when I did that review. I, oh I boy. left that one down. Don't go back and listen to that one. No, I will burn that one. But no, I enjoy. See, like that's the thing. You think I just like watching dumb shit, and that's cool. Yeah, ninety percent of the time. Ninety nine percent of the time, that's what you tell me you watch. You then know, you throw me a curveball and you say you watch John Adams. I'm supposed to believe this? Well, this is why I don't bring it up. What happens it? in the fifth episode, thirty minutes in? I don't exactly. Know you don't know time. shit. What happens fifth episode? I'm not going to tell you. You go back and watch it. Yeah, that's my knowledge. You're fucking my knowledge stuck. for people that deserve it, yeah, not bullshit. you. That's your bullshit. <laughs> that you're fucking. Anyway, we're talking about What did about you watch? Black Sunday. Black Sunday. That's a great movie. Yeah, you recommended it, and uh, I was like, all right. The way you uh, you talked about it, I was like, all right, I'm game. Black Sunday. John Frankenheimer. Yeah. Robert Shaw. Bruce Stern. Robert Shaw and Bruce Stern, and like the best Bruce Stern, where he's fucking nuts. Yeah, he is nuts, especially like towards the end when the the actual. Um, um, you know, the blimp rides happening, you know, and fucking yeah. get, oh my God. And right before it, when you, oh yeah, I don't want to, yeah, it's so the, fucking amazing. The setup to Black Sunday's 1977 is there's a big terrorist group called, uh, what is it? The Black November? Yeah. Black, Sept- uh, Black, Black September. September. Black December. Black December. Yeah. And, uh, they are going around and the, the government's working with, uh, the Israelis, I guess, that are yeah. coming over who play uh, headed by Robert Shaw. 
and they're trying to thwart a terrorist attack. They don't know where it's going to be until the end of the movie, but it, the terror ta- terrorist attack is uh, perpetrated by Bruce Dern, who's an ex-pilot from Vietnam. and He he's, was a POW, too. Yeah, he's a POW. For six years. And he's going to use the Goodyear blimp that he is in command of to blow up the Super Bowl during the Super Bowl. Not even blow up, just shoot out a bunch of like darts that like stab people to death. Oh, right. Yeah, it's not even a bomb. It's like a gun, but it shoots out like it's crazy like a, shit. Like a frag grenade. It's yeah. basically like, like a, a Goodyear blimp frag, frag grenade. Yeah, but the movie is so intense yeah. because at every sequence, there's something going on where somebody is chasing somebody or somebody's dying in that great 70s way where you're like holy shit this looks real they're doing this in a big fucking crowd yeah there's double crossing robert shaw's just hot on the trails trying to solve this people keep keep dying all the time yeah right and then this whole time you have like bruce dern and his uh and his uh girlfriend who's actually part of the of the the black december group right they're just plotting building the bombs trying not to get found out and she has to manipulate him and deal with his like you know PTSD from the war and, and shows the 76 Steelers. Thank yeah, you. I, I was so stoked when oh it was the Cowboys God. versus Steelers in this in this film uh, during the Super Bowl. And I remember this was a great story. You should read Robert Evans book. Um, the kid stays in the picture. Yeah, because he has a little section devoted to Black Sunday, which he produced. And they only had they had half time to get this shot or series of shots. And if they didn't get it, it was it was going to ruin the movie, basically. Yeah, you don't get the shots. Yeah, yeah, so they had to do the shot during the real Super Bowl, during half halftime, and rely on, like, extras and nothing to go wrong. And, and they did it, and they, they pulled it off. I wonder. I want to go back and wonder what shots. Is it the one like the blimps actually in the stadium? And See, I, I couldn't figure it out either because there's so much at the end. It's you didn't, so fast paced and yeah. cut together. Yeah, it's so, there's so much suspense when when he's in the blimp and he's about to go and and you know detonate at the Super Bowl because of course you know is he going to pull it off and he has to go back and and land and then the team the the team of people are like wait you you can't do this and then he fucking blows them all away and his and then yeah. his girlfriend's in there and well, then a machine gun shooting down helicopters and yeah like, like a, a helicopter chases the blimp and there's a shootout between the blimp and the helicopter and robert shaw is fucking amazing in this i mean yeah it from where it starts to where it ends i was like i feel like i've just been on like a, a like a cross-country trip or like around the globe or something yeah it when, was so all over the place but it all worked together so well and had so much suspense to it yeah it's just amazing and yeah because it's just book ended with so much action because it shows like a mission in the beginning and then then you slowly get to learn about brewster and how he's you know he's been traumatized from all the war uh being a pow right you just slowly see his madness coming out and then him bringing his girlfriend for the suicide mission i posted about this on um on facebook to one of these film groups that i uh i follow and engage with and Everybody was everybody just blew up. No pun intended. Uh, everybody, the, the, the post blew up and everybody's commenting on how much they love this movie. But then 80 percent of the comments were like, I love this movie, but the effects at the end were terrible. And so I was like, what? What do you mean? Like, I, I didn't think the effects were terrible at the end, like the the blimp stuff, you know, and when the thing blew up and it crashed and people were jumping. I'm like, it was 1977. Yeah. Are they talking about some of the shots where you can tell it's like a helicopter in front of a, a, a projection screen? Yeah, you, know, you know, what much worse that has been in movies oh, past. for sure. And movies present, too. Yeah. Uh, all the Avengers movies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'm like going like, oh, yeah, I feel like we're in outer space right now. Oh, that blimp in the stadium is not really to scale. It's a smaller blimp. You can tell by the. Uh, you know whatever yeah fuck off. it just goes to show why even you know when you join a film group on something like facebook you know it, it's it's supposed to be about uh celebrating film but you know what celebrating anything is for people the cutting it down also yeah telling you what they don't like about something and it what i i like to do it still because it's just hilarious because people do they say the most insane shit like the brazenly yeah. brazenly saying like no you you are wrong that movie actually is terrible and you are terrible for liking it yeah it's like wow that's cool hiding behind your keyboard yeah well why don't you tell them all that uh andy said to kiss his ass actually i'm gonna start doing that i'm gonna start posting your opinions on there and then see what people say i'll give you feedback Okay. Yeah. My friend Andy said, I'm just to do that. My friend Andy says this about this movie. Yeah. Tell your friend Andy to go fuck himself. Well, they'll be like, yeah, sure, your friend Andy, Nathan. And they'll be like, no, he's a real guy. Here's a picture. <laughs> no, I'm going to tag you. My friend Andy tagged says this about Smurfs 2. We're going to start there. 
<laughs> okay, whatever. We'll pick, we'll pick some random. All right, what do you want to hear about? I I honestly I'm I'm gonna let you choose what you want me to talk about this this week in terms of what I saw. I'm gonna give you the, the movies that I did see. Okay. Okay. Uh, the Boys in the Band from 1970. Alex in Wonderland, also from 1970. Airport from, you guessed it, 1970. Oh, I watched that with you. Jaws 3D from 1983. Oh, yeah. American Psycho from 2000. Everyone Says I Love You from 1996. That Thing You Do, also from 1996. The Wedding Singer. <laughs> oh, God. This and, is tough. And uh, the TV set and Little Big Man from also 1970. The TV. Oh, the TV. That was the name of that. I, I, I forgot what the name of that was. Um, you know what, man? I, I I see like a lot of I want to learn about movies I haven't watched before too. Sure, which one did which one? It was the first two you? seventy first two seventies you movies you uh, you you talked about. Uh, but the boys in the band or Alex in Wonderland. Um, uh, yeah, let's go with the boys in the band. Well, I'm gonna go with Alex in Wonderland because out of the two, I think that you would like Alex in Wonderland better. Okay, cool. Uh, the boys in the band is basically a stage play that has a lot of dialogue and great emotions and feelings, and it's, it's a great movie. So that's not for you. What do you mean? See, um, look, look, listen. I watch John <clears> Adams. <throat> I like things that... I like... I feel, goddammit, I like feely movies. Alex in Wonderland stars one of my favorite actors, Donald Sutherland. I love him. And he not only... You don't know this, Donald. The 70s Donald Sutherland? You don't know. Okay. You probably you probably never even seen MASH, the original. No, I haven't. What the fuck? What do you it's mean? Like one of my favorite movies. I understand. We've watched enough episodes of. We've even no, been... that's definitely not the same thing. Match the TV show and match the movie are two completely different things. One is and then what's the movie? <laughs> yeah, get the fuck out of here. Get the fuck out. I've been to where they film Match. I've seen the the Jeep. Um, but what I'm saying to you is the reason I'm bringing this movie up. There is a period of Donald Sutherland where you. Especially, I think you don't know how badass he is. Like, badass motherfucker in the 70s. Take no prisoners, take no shit. Such a serious actor, but chose such amazing roles in the 70s that you will look at him like he's your Michael Fassbender. Gotcha. Is that who you're in love with? Uh, oh, no, Tom Hardy. Tom there's Hardy. There's many. <laughs> yeah, Man, I'm There's a lot there of is. great actors out there right now besides Chalamet. But, okay, <laughs> don't, don't get me started. But I'm telling you, 1970 kind of kicks off this run of his where, in my eyes, he definitely is a badass of the 70s. That is very underrated. Even though everybody loves Donald Sutherland, yeah. they don't consider him a badass. And I'm saying not that he's like Charles Bronson. He's going on kicking a bunch of guys' ass. I'm saying because as an actor, he kicks your ass, ass because he's so fucking good. He's so sense. fucking good. You've seen Don't Look Now. Yeah. Yeah, so like, you know how intense his performance is in that? Oh, yeah. Think about like Invasion of the Body Snatchers. Yeah, I've watched that, yeah. I mean, his his performance is so intense, It's it, it would shock me if he's not a method actor. Yeah, for sure. Like, doesn't break character on set. I mean, and I definitely wouldn't mess with him in a fight, even though it, he, he weighs like 120 pounds wet in the 70s. He's such yeah. a skinny guy, but he's tall. So in Alex in Wonderland, which kind of kicks off this set, because it is 1970, he... It's basically Paul Mazursky, Paul Mazursky's eight and a half. Okay, yeah, I think. And you don't know who that? I'm, I know, you don't of know the eight film. and a half or Paul Mazursky. I don't know Paul Mazursky, but I do know of the movie. Eight I think and the half. only reason you would know of Paul Paul Mazursky, I mean, you you should have seen Bob and Carol and Ted and Alice from '69. No, definitely no, didn't see that. No. Um, you definitely haven't seen Unmarried Woman. He was Norm in Curb Enthusiasm. The guy that that gets Larry Davis like kicked out of the golf club because his, oh, his, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. his locker's dirty. Yes, yes, yes. Okay, that guy. That's how you know him. Um, but that's he, great. He's a pretty amazing director for the seventies. One of those guys that Cineas really loved because his movies aren't that well known, but they're really well respected. praised and respected. The yeah. critics loved him in the seventies, and uh, this was his second movie after uh, Bob and Carol and Ted Nows. And, and it every director. It, I think every director that knows of Fellini has their eight and a half and usually does their eight and a half. So in, the, especially in the seventies, my God, you're going to have all these directors that were inspired by the French new wave and of, of Fellini and, you know, European cinema that had just come out 10, 20 years before they started their careers. So of course they all just took those ideas and those formats and made their American versions of those because the studios were actually saying, wow, we don't know what to do anymore. 
everything is collapsing and we're not making any money because we're not making money that appeals to the youth market because the youth market was who the directors became the directors yeah. the 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 anti vietnam era the protest era and you know the film brats or the movie brats and the film nerds really were taking over and they finally got to make their movies because Hollywood had no other place to turn to. And eventually they made Jaws and Star Wars and they ruined that. Um. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, I knew that was coming. <laughs> but Alex in Wonderland, like I said, is Mazursky's Eight and a Half. And I've seen a lot of directors versions of Eight and a Half. But this one was fucking fantastic because it's basically just Donald Sutherland walking around L.A. doing tons of drugs and uh, kind of trying to come up with his next film. He plays a film director who's just had a, uh, who, who, who's just, I guess, yeah, his movie's going to come out, but it's, it's a lock to make a shit ton of money. Yeah. So he's trying to figure out what he does next. He has no idea what he wants to do next. So he just walks around town, does tons of drugs with anybody and everybody in Los Angeles in 1970. And uh, you just watch. And that's how movies are made, people. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that sounds amazing. Yeah. Hell yeah. You're right. You're probably not going to think this is amazing, but it is kind of like... Why, why not? Why wouldn't I think because it was there's too much talking? There's no plot. There's that's no fine. plot. I don't need a plot. It's just actors and non-actors and in and out of situations. There's th One situation doesn't make sense with the next until you get to the end and you go, oh, okay, cool. Like, it just felt like it was an acid dream. Yeah, I got you. Okay. But I, I like visually, that. it is. It's one of my favorite movies set in Los Angeles because I've always wanted to walk around Los Angeles in 1969, 1970. And doing a shitload of drugs. Well, I mean, come on. Yeah. Why, why wouldn't you? Everybody else yeah. is doing it. it and everybody's having a great time, you know? Yeah. Um, but I think you would really like this movie. It's a great hangout movie. You like hangout movies. And you liked Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So it's it reminds me of that, but if it was on acid. Yeah, well, it kind of sounds like it's like a, now it's like a like what would it be like a, a link letter film with the real and the fake actors, mm. but more like like slacker, but not as. I mean, I guess you could I could see where the you know Linklater definitely might have been influenced by Mazursky, but I don't think necessarily this movie. But yeah, the idea of this movie, gotcha. I could see. What, yeah, I, I would say that maybe, maybe. Yeah. Um, but because you've never seen you know two Linklater movies besides, and you you can't count uh, Days and Confused. Okay, Bernie. I've watched Burry. a scanner, a scanner darkly. Like anything, uh, anything from his early career. Um, uh, Thank you. Moving on. Uh, what uh, else slacker, you... slacker. I've watched <laughs> yeah, Slacker. Yeah, that the reach for Slacker, which was the the biggest movie that defined him, his first fucking. Oh yeah, god. Anyway. Biggest reach. That, anyway, yeah. with it, I was in god. my pocket. In pick my pocket. Your, baby. Pick up your balls on the way out of here. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. Anyway, so what? Give me one, one more that you've seen, then we'll we'll get out of well, here. Well, we're, now we're cross pollinating with your list, so it's we, you take. Whoa, a pick. whoa, whoa! No, you've seen other movies besides this. No, not really. I mean, besides, <laughs> great. We watched the TV set. We've watched uh, that thing you do. We've watched American Psycho and okay, um, American Psycho. Let's talk about that. Yeah, I yeah, I've it. been mildly obsessed with that movie ever since it came out love in two thousand. Love that movie. I don't. It's it's an odd thing, you know. And I'm gonna I'm gonna tell you my viewing experience watching it with you. Watching you watch this movie. Okay. I don't know. It, I love sitting behind you because that you, sounds so creepy. You, <laughs> when we're talking about American Psycho. What are you gonna fucking put on Huey Lewis and kill me? Um, but I, you always sit in front of me during movies, so I get to watch you watching the movie. And I'm not gonna lie to you. You creeped me out when when I was you, when I was watching this movie with you. Why? Your face was almost like orgasmic during the the scenes of insane bloodless bloodlust. No, it's just fucking. It, no, it wasn't like shocked. It was like, oh yeah. Yeah. I was shocked. I've seen this movie at least like 20 times. I'm going to be shocked every it's a fucking... I mean, no, there's nothing wrong with being into S&M and stuff, but it seems like you're a candidate. No. Even no. if you don't think I'm you are. I'm not a dom or a sub. Or um, a, like I, see, a... Oh, you know, the, I don't even know what that means. Yeah. See, I, I'm, so, hip, you know, I'm uh, hip to the lingo. I, I know I know the, all the lingo and I know I, I have all the, the, the equipment, but I'm not part of the team. Hey, just because I have assless chaps. I'm, I'm telling you, every time something happened that was disgusting in this movie or terrifying, no. you were like, give it to me, baby. Give it to me. It's give the, it to me it's the killer next door the wolf in sheep's clothing you know it's just like it's one of those stories. yeah i'm saying you get off on that and then w did he really do all the murders or did he not i just want to be i want to have a, a warrant issued for your arrest bullshit or... Look at you. when i was sitting behind you i just kept watching you the whole movie <laughs> yeah i had on. to because you started breathing so loudly you started sweating during bullshit. the torture scenes actually i breathe loud and i sweat during every movie move on sir
Move on. That, that's no explanation. All I'm saying is, though, I can't get you arrested. I definitely want to have a police come and search your premises, your room. My premises. Do a cavity this, search. Listen to you talking right now. You <laughs> fucking. I just say nobody. If you watch this movie and you are having a great time during the scenes of torture and because blood, there's, it's, there's it's, something wrong it's with a, you. It's also a, a, like a dark comedy too, because of all the shit that's going on. Yes, there's a lot of funny stuff in this. But when you know a chainsaw goes into a person's side and uh, no, you know. He screams because and he laughs. That that kill was one of a very creative. A kill, kill. is a <laughs> kill is a kill. God damn it! Maybe, but it's true. Like, come on, when he drops, he's the, the victim, huh? No, he's not the victim. He's the fucking. How is how is Patrick Bateman your favorite character in this movie? He's not my favorite character. I mean, but why do you have posters of him? I don't have. posters I've looked under of your mattress. Oh yeah, I, that's where I keep posters. posters. Yeah, no. <laughs> I have a poster under my bed, my mattress. Yeah, you keep. I stretch it out. <laughs> yeah, and I just lay on it. No way. No, I just. I, it's, it's a very interesting movie because you have this guy. Who, I've always wanted to read the book. Yeah, me too. And maybe I'll get you the book because you've read like one book in your life. Maybe I'll get you the audio book. Um, cool. And you can you can tell me what the difference is between this and the movie, and you can also use it like people use Playboy back in the day. Yeah, so they were, well, for the articles, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to read and put pictures together using your imagination, but it still gets you off. Um, but the reason oh. I'm always been, I've been obsessed with this movie is because tonally there's not much like it. It's really a mixture of two genres, where it is it's horror horror genre mixed with kind of like the yuppie Wall Street money you know money yeah. genre, like business genre. I would I definitely think this is equally a very scary movie, but also a great insight into the 1980s about greed. This would be a great double feature for something like Wall Street. Yeah, for sure. You know, you see, like, you show this one, uh, you know, like, second, of course. Yeah. It's a late night one. But it is. It's It It seems like it's all a metaphor for a time that, you know, I was born, but I, I wasn't of age to know what was going on in the 80s, which was, like, tons of cocaine, apparently. Um, Decade of excess. And spending and spending spending over your means. The and everybody, rise of corporations and the stock market and Wall Street. And but the fact of the matter is Patrick Bateman has never killed anyone, right? I, it's all just fantasy. It's I, the end of the movie. Is I've that what read, happens? I that's what I mean. Reading the book, I wonder if it's more definitive. You've but, seen it twenty five times. Yeah, you but said. I, I think he. It was all he was just having delusions. He's just a, a very disturbed person. Working so he on. never killed Paul Allen. I don't think he did. He never did any. He never had. He never even invited those prostitutes over. I mean, may, but maybe not to kill him, but he tortured them. I mean, well, he might have done that. I mean, I, that's why I want to read shit, the book. I got to you know, know if this was if and was he at all a psychopath that actually did these things, or was he? Did he just have insane fantasies like Army Hammer or something? Yeah, right. Yeah, he could have been yeah, Army Hammer reference. Look at that. Yeah, nice man. I mean, I wouldn't say uh, yeah. I, I, I don't know. I just don't. I've watched this movie so many times and I I still don't get an answer. But I bet there's people out there like, oh, you dipshit. Of course, it's all inside it's this, of his head. This, this and this. That, and... That's the movie, dumbass. And yeah. it's like, OK, well, I'm glad you're so definitive. But, you know, knowing that you don't know either, I feel terrible about myself. Why? Because you couldn't figure it out? You no, know, I, I figured it out. I, have, I I would say, of course, he didn't do it. But I'd like to ask the director. I, I'd like to ask the writer. You know, I'd, I'd like to read the book. You, on the other hand, don't ask the big questions, and you're fine without. We mean I asked the, the big questions. Knowing did he the big do it answers. Or not? What 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 other bigger question is there in this movie than did he do it or was it all just in his mind? Well, they're investigating him, and each time that he gets investigated, the the William Defoe's character, the cop, is always in a different mood when he's when he's investigating him. So it leads me to believe that even that might not be true. Yeah. So if he didn't kill Paul Allen, then where the, why the hell is he getting investigated by Willem Dafoe? Because he maybe he went missing. He actually did go to London. And You're just saying missing. maybe. You've seen this movie 25. This is my problem. Well, I mean, th that's the thing. We don't We don't know. We don't know. I'm, I'm going to let you know something as soon as we're off the mics. What? You're fired. Oh, nice. <laughs> cool. I'm done. Do we, we have time for one more? I don't know. Do we? No, we don't. Um, I was going to tell you about Little Big Man, the Dustin Hoffman movie, but we can wait mm -hmm. until next week. Um, okay. And the other movies you have seen, and they're they're kind of boring to you because they're good no, movies. And every seen movie's them. boring. Every <laughs> movie's out of my depth. Every movie. You know what? This is this is all you, man. This is all you, not me. The only one on the list that I would feel comfortable talking to you about is is either The Wedding Singer, which you've seen a thousand times. You're going to tell me the exact same jokes. You're going to tell me exactly why you love it. And it's I've I've heard boring. Boring, boring, and the other one would be Jaws 3D, and even that movie's out of your depth. What, what do you mean? No, it's not. I'm, I'm in the deep end with that one. Mm -hmm. What about that thing you do? I can speak, talk, 
to death about that thing you do, but we don't have time. And that artful sentence right there will take us out because my uh, point has just been fury. presented to me. Thank you very much, Andrew. It's been uh, lovely. Andrew, like I'm in trouble. <laughs> Thanks, Andrew. Like, I'll see you outside. Your bondage film is ready, sir. Please pick it see up. See me outside. You're the... Oh, it's disgusting. I know. You're, as soon as you read the book of American Psycho, it's going to be American Psycho in your shower, for sure. Yeah, yeah. Ugh, I'm so excited for you not to ever tell me you read it, but I'm going to I'm gonna have to buy that book for you. Thank you. And Merry Christmas, Happy Hanukkah, and see you next week. <laughs> <laughs>